Hello everyone, welcome to uh, the Symbiosis uh, Cover the Crop Benefits um, tutorial. Um, we're just going to run you through a few things on uh, why it's good to use a few different things. First and foremost, um, where cover crops fit into the, the principles of soil health uh, can be seen there in number three, the diversity of plant species. Uh, the other things are um, the principles that defined by Gabe Brown in his book Dirt to Soil and I guess now overall by regenerative agriculture on the principles that you should adhere to or, or take note of when uh, following a regenerative approach. The key and one of the first things is just about building carbon in your soil and this here shows the carbon cycle and, and where soil organic carbon fits into it. And um, one of the key things we, we do first and foremost is try not to till the soil if possible. Um, from symbiosis perspective, it's our opinion that when we till the soil, don't use diverse um, pastures, use synthetic fertilizers, pesticides and herbicides. We decrease the microbiological activity, fungi and bacteria in the soil. And as a result, we decrease soil carbon. Um, we actually decrease their activity and, and stop nutrient cycling. Um, so by putting uh, diverse species in, we have lots of different green solar panels above the, uh, the ground that are capturing light and through photosynthesis pump pumping liquid carbon into the ground through the root exudates and uh, feeding the biology, essentially creating an underground economy uh, where we're, we're passing off uh, carbon through root exudates in exchange for nutrients from, from other uh, aspects of the soil profile. So one of the key takeaways from this is just to understand that if we can increase soil uh, carbon, we can increase our water holding capacity, we can increase our water holding capacity, and if anything, that's really what we're trying to do in uh, any productive environment. This is uh, something that just shows a key figure here. If we can increase our soil carbon by 1%, we increase our water holding capacity per hectare by 144,000 litres. So that makes us a lot more tolerant um, in a drought environment. The other cycle to focus on is the nitrogen cycle and there's been a lot of use of uh, liquid nitrogen um, historically in, in the New Zealand environment. Uh, whilst in the atmosphere we have 78% of uh, the atmosphere is nitrogen. And so that's 74,000 tonnes above every hectare. Now, the nitrogen cycle is really driven by micro, microbiology, uh, the bacteria, the fungi, worms, and etc. If we're putting liquid N in there, or urea or any shape or form, then we're saying to plants we don't really need them to be working with bacteria and fungi, and so we break this down, and so it's not regenerative. So our whole focus is around making sure we don't use liquid in um, and we, we use plants, legumes, veg, peas, beans, uh, nitrogen sinks like radish, uh, clovers, different things that actually allow us to provide nitrogen to the soil profile. Sorghum sedan, okay, what is that good for? Okay, it's very good at scavenging nitrogen it's very good uh, from a grazing perspective. It's very good at soil building because, and, and subsoiling because it has big mass below the ground. So in essence, it's a plant that actually provides roots that go deep into the soil uh, that then allow carbon to be put in deep, deep down. But more than that, it's like tillage. It's actually opening things up so when it decomposes, another plant can follow, uh, follow its roots path. It, um, it also has a very good allopathic effect where it, uh, it allows plants to uh, be healthy, you know, shares its ability to be able to, plant, uh, to, be able to fight um, pathogens and, and what have you. It's also got a very short growth time. Black oats, or black oats are very good at scavenging nitrogen. Uh, they're good for grazing, um, and they also have, uh, they're pretty good at helping from a weed, weed perspective. 
quite good with soil growth and obviously can be used as a forage harvest. They also keep uh, residue on the ground. Peas, peas are a good uh, nitrogen source, allowing uh, nitrogen to be fixed and provided into the soil profile. Uh, they're good for grazing and quite good uh, beneficial organisms, just providing you know a habitat for different insects and, and the like to, to engage in your, your plant uh, diversity. Lentils, lentils are uh, reasonably good for grazing, also quite a good soil builder and okay with beneficial organisms and pretty good with rendering phosphorus and potassium. Linseed, Linseed is okay at scavenging nitrogen, pretty good at building soil, and not too bad at uh, dealing with surface compaction. Faber beans, uh, it's a very good source of nitrogen, not too bad at scavenging it as well, it can be grazed, uh, quite a good soil builder, good with surface compaction, reasonably, reasonably good at helping with render phosphorus and potassium available. Buckwheat. Buckwheat is uh, pretty good at dealing with uh, surface compaction and very good at rendering phosphorus and uh, potassium um, to assist with uh, plants. Beneficial organisms as well. It's a very big uh, attractor of, uh, of bees and, and, and the like. Rye corn or cereal rye if you're in the United States. Uh, it's very hardy in the winter. It's very good at scavenging nitrogen. Uh, it can be grazed. It's a good soil builder, good at dealing with soil compaction, reasonably good at uh, assisting with phosphorus and potassium, and has a very good allelopathic effect as well. Annual rye grass, uh, reasonably okay with scavenging nitrogen, brilliant at grazing, uh, good soil builder, uh, surface compaction and one, one of the things though with it you just got to be careful using too much ryegrass in your ryegrass because it can choke uh, a lot of other um, plant species out so just something to be mindful of. Phacelia. Phacelia is very good for beneficial organisms is what, and it can be grazed so it's just a very good uh, thing at attracting bees and, and if you ever go through um, a paddock in February and you've got uh, facility you'll just see bees galore. Millet, millet's good at scavenging nitrogen, uh, it's good for grazing, it's good for building soil, good for compaction. Balancia clover, uh, it's good at uh, fixing nitrogen, uh, it's good for grazing and beneficial, good for beneficial organisms as well. Rape, uh, it's good at scavenging nitrogen, good for grazing, good for erosion control, uh, it's good subsoiler, good for soil compaction, good for phosphorus and potassium and reasonably good for, uh, for beneficial organisms as well. Vetch. Vetch is uh, good with uh, fixing nitrogen and it's very hardy in the winter. Uh, it's also good for grazing, it's good for soil building, good for soil compaction, not a bad subsoiler, rendering phosphorus and potassium, great for beneficial organisms. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic plant. Bersham clover, uh, good at scavenging um, nitrogen, very good with grazing and pretty good with soil compaction and rendering phosphorus and potassium. Grazing corn, maize, uh, it's good at scavenging nitrogen, good for grazing and crimson clover, uh, it's good for grazing, uh, very good for beneficial organisms and good at building soil. Tillage radish, uh, it's a it's very good at scavenging nitrogen, so it's a nitrogen sink and sets it up uh, when it decomposes for the next next plant. 
Uh, it's good, reasonably okay for uh, grazing, soil building. It's a great subsoiler uh, because it breaks down through pans as it, and gets into the soil profile. Renders phosphorus and potassium. Persim clover. It's good for grazing and fixes nitrogen and good for beneficial organisms. Sunflower, it's very good at scavenging nitrogen. Uh, it's good for grazing. It's pretty good for erosion control. It's good subsoil, good for dealing with surface compaction, good rendering phosphorus and potassium, good for beneficial organisms. Yellow mustard, uh, it's good for scavenging nitrogen. It's not a bad soil builder and great for beneficial organisms, soil compaction and allopathic effect. Turnip, uh, it's good for scavenging nitrogen. It's reasonably good at fixing nitrogen as well. Grazing potential and that's that. And that's pretty much everything we have to say today. If you have any questions in relation to anything, by all means, contact us on the, the number shown or visit our website which will be up shortly and get in contact with us.